Hi everybody, it's Fabulous Friday and today we're talking about obstacles in recovery and today, this week, we're going to talk about stigma. Um, how do I feel about stigma? Stigma to me is just kind of like a really sort of nice socially acceptable word for ignorance. Um, I feel like we use the word stigma as a way to justify ignorance around things that we're uncomfortable about in society. Um, you know, it's it's almost socially acceptable to be, you know, ignorant about these aspects of our society and things that we're uncomfortable um, with, and that is somehow allowed um, and branched under that term of, of stigma um, or racism. Just a lot of those words that, you know, when you really look at the bare bones of the issue, it's it's just you're being stupid about it. Um, or ignorant about it. And so that's how I feel about stigma. And unfortunately, one of the major areas that we are familiar with stigma is mental health. Um, I have actually not found, in eating disorders specifically, I've not found huge, huge, huge amounts of stigma. I've found it a lot more in, um, if you've been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, that can be brutal for stigma. Um, and there's some other things too that, you know, if you if you've ever had trouble with um, if you've ever had just anything that's termed really out of the norm, you know people can relate somewhat to body image issues. Like everybody to a certain degree is uncomfortable with what they don't like in their body, um, and they can relate to that. Maybe not to the same experience that someone with an eating disorder can, but they don't. It's not completely. Fat, like unfathomable and like beyond their experience or someone who hears voices or someone who wants to you know frequently end their life or be so self-destructive um, that's a little bit harder to relate to so I, I found that stigma is actually it is there for eating disorders absolutely um, but I found that it's been you know I found it more difficult to deal with in certain other aspects of mental health as well um, but we're talking about eating disorders this time so one example that I thought was kind of fitting, and probably not a bad example to talk about, seeing as Halloween just passed, anybody who's on Facebook and follows anything to do with eating disorders is probably a little bit familiar with the, the costume that came up called anorexia. So it's Anna, the first name, A-N-N-A, and then Rexia, R-E-X-I-A, is the surname. And what it is, is it's a costume of like a very, um, um, I mean, it, I guess she's not super thin, but, you know, a very socially acceptable thin person um, with a very skimpy, uh, revealing black silhouette uh, dress with bones on it. And there's um, a tape measure around her waist. And that was apparently a socially acceptable costume to advertise for people to buy. Um, and not even getting into what I think about it, um, but the fact that they're, I'm, I'm using it more as a way to illustrate stigma. People are uncomfortable with the idea. People are ignorant about the idea. And that just goes to show, because it came out like two years ago, um, that we're still having stigma problems with it because it came out again this year. Um, it's, I personally think it's a ridiculous costume. I think that it's really, really insulting um, to a lot of people. And, yeah, so that's, there's stigma. And it's, you know, not something that we can really be like, oh, yeah, no, it's not really there. It, it, it is. <laughs> like, it's really, you know, it's, it's blatant, it's obvious, and it's kind of insulting. Um, and there were, I have friends that commented on I didn't actually comment on it myself. But I have a friend that commented on it, and two of the most striking comments were someone said, you could have called this x-ray vision and not offended anybody. And I thought that was really interesting, because she's completely, absolutely correct. Um, it probably wouldn't have garnered the same sort of attention, but it wouldn't have offended anybody. Well, why didn't we choose that route? That's, you know, that's also at the heart of issues, stigma. Um, and then the second thing is, you know, Someone had said, well, I'm still waiting for the sexy dying cancer patient costume. And I think that she's very right. You know, when you come out with a sexy dying cancer patient stick costume, not saying that that's any more appropriate. I don't think so. I, I would still think both are inappropriate. But if both of them come out and, you know, 
are considered socially acceptable, then I'll start sort of letting my view on stigma around anorexia slide. Because then we're starting to see that, you know, I think both costumes would be absolutely terrible and absolutely really tasteless, but it is not acceptable to make fun of a cancer patient the way that it is an anorexia patient. And that's where I'm trying to illustrate that stigma. Um, and like how it comes up. Because a lot of people are like, oh well, you know, people don't really experience stigma with eating disorders. Um, you know, don't they get glamorized and that kind of thing? And yeah, there's an aspect of that. Um, but there's still a lot of stigma around it. Just people are uncomfortable with it and they don't want to deal with the heart of the issue. Um, so what can you deal or what can you do to deal with stigma? Um, so that it doesn't become an obstacle in your recovery. Because if you buy into the stigma, it will become an obstacle in recovery. Um, if you buy into the fact that you are somehow inferior, that somehow your condition is, you know, there for people to make fun of or anything like that, um, then you're going to undermine the very essence of the foundation of your recovery. And so there's, there's things that you need to do. Uh, first of all, you need to figure out where do you stand on the issue? Um, you know, like, where do I stand on the issue? I don't think a sexy dying cancer patient costume would be very tasteful. I'm not really loving the idea of it. But I'm prepared to renegotiate um, my experience of stigma if we start looking at both of those conditions the same way. And that's, I guess, what I'm trying to say um, from my experience of it, is that I don't feel like the dying cancer patient is made fun of and trivialized the same way that a lot of eating disorder patients are. Um, and I would not wear either costume if both of them came out. But at the same time, you know, we don't look at those two things the same way, even though they're both life-threatening illnesses. Um, so you have to figure out where you stand on that. And the second thing um, is that you have to be really assertive about where you stand on it. And assertive can be hard, especially when you're not used to it. Um, but it sort of also doesn't mean, you know, shove your, you know, your opinion down someone's throat, as tempting as that may be, um, because that doesn't work for anybody. Um, assertive means I recognize my rights, I recognize your rights, and I'm not going to do anything to compromise either of either side of those rights. Um, so if someone were to come up to me and be like, oh, 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 what do you think about this lovely anorexia costume? I'd be like, you know what? I, I don't think it's lovely. I think it really, really offends me. Um, I don't like it. And, you know, people are like, oh, well, it's not funny. No, it's not. It's not funny to me. You know, you can find it funny. Um, I might have some opinions about whether or not about you as a person if you find that funny, but I don't personally find it funny. And please don't expect me to find it funny. Um, and then, you know, you can sort of start to feel like, well, if someone says, well, why not? You know, you're like, you can kind of sort of feel like, mm, are you actually interested, or are you just sort of being coy and sarcastic? And if they are actually interested, you know, you can come up with an answer. And for me, I think the answer, you know, in that context of that costume, is th the thing that offends me most about it, and it would offend me, again, if it was sexy dying cancer patient, or if it were an anorexia costume, is that someone gets to put that on for a night, pretend to be something they aren't, pretend to live something they aren't, pretend to experience something they aren't, and identify as something they aren't, which can ruin and define your life in such a pivotal and profound way, and then take it off at the end of the night and throw it away. That's the part that offends me the most, I think. Um, so that's what I would explain to someone. You know, not, you're stupid for thinking that, not, you know, how dare you be so insensitive, just that's my opinion on it, and that's how I would explain it. Um, and you do have to be assertive about it, uh, and you have to, you know, it, timing can be a little bit key. If it's someone that matters to you, definitely go for it, but if it's not, then you might want to let it slide. But if it really bothers you, if that's, like, if you have that, like, sort of burning fire in your belly, then you need to say something. Which can be hard to do, as well, because, you know, people with eating disorders and other mental health problems have major, major problems around speaking up for themselves and seeing that they have worth and seeing that they have values and human rights and that kind of thing. Um, so sometimes it can be easier to think of someone um, when you have that 
and then you have that need to be assertive about something you believe. You think of someone else in mind. So, you know, it could be a sister, it could be a mother, it could be your daughter. You know, what if she were following those same footsteps? Wouldn't you want to fight part of that battle for her? So, if you can't do it for yourself, do it for someone else who's going to follow the same shoes as you. Uh, or walk in the same shoes as you and follow the same path. Because if you make that path a little bit easier, um, by being like, you know what, I'm one more voice that doesn't like this, and that's okay, then, you know, that that's going to make it easier for someone. Uh, so if you can't do it for you, do it for someone you love. Um, and just know that there are a lot of really open-minded people out there. And there are a lot of people who, you know, might not relate to exactly the same way you're feeling, but they want to. And they want to, to understand. Um, so don't be afraid to share your opinion. You know, be polite about it. Be assertive about it. Um, but definitely don't don't shy away from from saying something about it. And uh, definitely don't buy into the stigma yourself. Because the minute you start buying into it and you start thinking, oh yeah, you know what? Maybe I'm not worth anything. Maybe someone should make fun of me. And then you just, you know, you need to take like 18 steps back on recovery. And that's, that's not anything anybody wants to do. And you don't deserve to. So just simply don't. Anyway, I hope you all have a very fabulous weekend, and uh, I will hopefully talk to you guys soon. Thanks.